Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel and today I have a video that I'm very excited about. I actually posted a poll on Instagram and I asked if people wanted to see a video of materials I used or I use in my collection and materials that I would recommend. Um, and a lot of people said yes, so here I am <laughs> with a video. Um, I do want to preface this video by saying you don't need everything that I'm going to talk about in this video. These are recommendations and I'll talk about each and every single one of them and where I get my stuff because I get a lot of questions about where do you get this, where do you get that, what brand do you use? So I just wanted a video that could help answer all those questions. Um, hopefully by the end you have an idea of what I use and what you could use. And like I said, with these videos, I'll go through the pros and maybe even the cons of the items and why it's useful and why I think it's necessary, but you may not. So please keep that in mind. Um, so I have three categories. I kind of split it into my two... I have two different types of binders. I have my A5 mini binders and then I have my like bigger three or three ring binders, the ones that you can find at like any office stores. So I'll, I split it into those materials and then I also have a couple of sales and trades recommendations. Um, I'm still thinking about whether, whether or not I wanted to keep the sleeves together and talk about them in one separate section. But we'll see how the video goes. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this and let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about the bigger three earring binders first. I get a lot of questions where I get this binder just because people really like like how it's built, how it's shaped. Um, I do too. It's a D-ring binder, which means it's not one of those like normal circle rings. I don't know what it's called. It's the normal three ring binders. It's a D-ring binder and then it's the one touch style. So it's easy to open and close. I like D-ring binders because it's kind of helpful in preventing your binder from damaging your cards because the circle ones tend to leave an imprint and I've experienced that firsthand. You can watch my previous videos from when I started collecting. I used to use just the circle ring binders, but obviously if that works for you and you're not, your binder is not overflowing like me <laughs> most of the time, then circle ring binders are okay. Um, this is from the brand Exceed, I believe. You can get it from Walmart, that's where I get mine from, but I know Staples and Office Depot has a similar style. I mean, I really like the shape of this because it's curved and overall it's very plain and simple. The decal, I got it, well I made, I made this decal. I have a decal store if you're interested, but this one I got this from Etsy when I just started collecting and I kept it there because I think it's super cute still, but yeah. So let's go ahead and go through this one. So this is my, let me just put this to the side. This is my three ring binder for nine pocket fitting pages. So for the nine pocket pages, I use the Herka card sleeve pages. It has multiple rings, so it can fit different styles of binders, I think but it just fits my three ring binder. I really like this. It's the same quality in my opinion as Ultra Pro, but this one doesn't pick up a lot of dust and fingerprints like Ultra Pro does. Um, I used to use the Ultra Pro Platinum pages, but it got like dusty and dirty, even though I didn't like touch my pages like all over. Um, I recommend this one. It's about the same price and you get the same amount and it works well and it's accessible and it's also super cute and simple. I like that it doesn't have Ultra Pro, the holographic thing right here on it just because it seems plain and simpler. Uh, and then for my cover pages, I use this same page. I just put white cardboard or cardstock paper. Um, this is the Office Depot brand. This is their eight and a half by 11 uh, one pocket sleeve protector sheet protector um this is safe for collections i did look it up on the box it says it's okay if you're doing like archives and stuff so yeah it's safe for that and i think for this binder that is all that i have to talk about these are what i use um i just use the same sheet protector 
as a divider. I think it's a lot simpler. Um, but yeah, that's how it is. I also wanted to talk about the sleeves that I use for this binder. So for my nine pocket pages, I use Dragon Shield Clear Classic card sleeves. So there is a difference. They have the matte sleeves and the classic card sleeves. I use the clear classic card sleeves. It's very sturdy. It's not flimsy at all, and it fits in the nine pocket page perfectly. Um, it doesn't fit too snug, but also it doesn't fit too loose. Also, sorry about the dog hair. Um, but yeah, it's that is my number one recommendation. I used to use just like normal card sleeves for my nine pocket pages. And though it works, it's just not like it it moved around a lot. But with the Dragon Shield card sleeves, it worked out just fine. Um, also, I want to say I do double sleeve my photo cards, but some people do not. It really is just preference. Um, I like to double sleeve my cards for extra protection, but you don't have to. And then for, let me see if I can find... So for filler cards, sometimes I use them to just have like a template already done or I just use them to fill in any missing spaces. I also use Dragon Shield card sleeves. So these are the Dragon Shield matte white card sleeves. Um, they're the same size as the Dragon Shield clear classic card sleeves. These are standard size um, sleeves. And I just use it and it works perfectly. It looks great. I know other people use Ultra Pro. And then I think there's also, which one is the other one? I forgot. Titan Shield is what it's called. But I do use Dragon Shield all around. And you'll see a pattern later on. But yeah, that is what I have for my nine pocket pages. Let's go ahead and move on to pages with varying sizes. This is my 17 bigger inclusions binder. So first let's talk about these giant two pocket pages. I got these from the brand Guardhouse Shield. You can get them on eBay or Amazon. I'll try to find an open listing that is still in stock and link it down below. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and link everything down below. Um, but yeah, so this is the brand Guardhouse Shield. It's made for bigger inclusions. Uh, if you're a carrot and you know the struggle of just finding a page, a binder page that will fit the 17 carat postcards, this is the one that I would recommend. I really like this one. Um, it's also safe for collections or ar archives, so you can go ahead and freely use this one without having to damage your cards. I don't double sleeve any of my bigger inclusions, but I know some people prefer to do that as well and another style of two pocket pages these are the bcw two pocket pages i think they fit a little over five by seven photo or postcards um so here are Boise b postcards for reference i like these but the only complaint that i have is it cuts off at such a weird spot in comparison to all my other um binder pages and then another two pocket page that I would recommend are these. I got this from Staples. These are just four by six pocket pages. They're made for photos, so they're safe for collections. I use this for four by six postcards and it works well. Um, I know Ultra Pro, BCW, all of those like collection brands also sell um, something like this, something similar, but this is a cheaper alternative, obviously, and it works well. So I like that. Um, and then let's go ahead and talk about four pocket pages. So four pocket pages fit, um, postcards or paper goods. It's just a little less than the size of four by seven. I forget the exact dimensions that will fit in these four pocket pages, but for reference, I'm pretty sure um here so the hengare bookmarks fit in four pocket pages well as well as the semicolon mini cards um so i think four pocket pages are great to have in your collection if you collect anything other than uh the little tiny photo cards but yes so we have that and another example for the guardhouse shield it fits the semicolon folded uh 
posters or whatever this is well um and then i think i have one more pocket page that i wanted to talk about and it's these these are the four by six three pocket pages from the brand avery um it has a random like slot here i was just gonna put like the name of um what these are so stickers from an ode there but i decided against it it fits four by six postcards or less i just like to have these if there's like three cards or three cards that i can put in and then it would be nice to just label it but yes so that is what i have for bigger paper goods um and then for just stuff that are a bit big i just use the office depot ones and then i put white cardstock paper behind it so it doesn't seep through or see through to the next page and i think that is it for all my recommendations for different pocket pages i will also link these down below and if i can't find them i'll link something similar that i have tried so that i'm not blindly recommending something but these materials or at least these binder pages work well for me and I'm not really too picky when it comes to the binder pages for these just because uh, bigger paper goods are not my top priority. Okay, and then the next type of binder that I have are the A5 mini photo card binders. These are the Beyond D, or this one is. This is the Beyond D um, A5 binder. So let's first talk about this part um so i'm using just a cover page these are actually like just pieces of paper made for a5 planners i use the cover i use it as a cover for the front and the back so i use this as the cover for the front and the back um and yeah it's really bad right now but this is from the brand artium series and i got mine from mochi things it was about like four dollars before shipping and it would come with i think 32 or 16 pages i don't recall but i just put them together so i have a blue one and a cool pink color but i prefer the blue one um and then when you open it i have the four pocket pages only so for these, the pages are very thin. It wouldn't fit your standard size Dragon Shield card sleeves. So what I do use are Dragon Shield card sleeves that are Japanese sized. So I use the Clear Classic, the Classic White as filler cards for missing album PCs. And then I use Japanese size card sleeves, duh um the matte clear ones as well and then for just aesthetic purposes i plan to change the color of these i use the ultra pro matte duck protector sleeves and these are the small size um card sleeves and this one is the lilac color so yeah or matte pink i guess not lilac but it fits perfectly it's around the same size as the dragon shield japanese card sleeves so this is what they look like um i do use a variation of the clear matte and the clear classic these are very hard to find for a good price on amazon so i suggest looking on ebay or even directly from the dragon shield website uh the the cost for um collection materials increased like recently like a lot by a lot but anyway so that is what I used I like mini A5 binders because they're easy to carry it's easy to store also they're very like cute um I want to talk about where you can get these so the A5 mini binder from Beyond D I got from Naver or Naver, however you say it, but I will put a link down below to an Etsy shop that sells it. Um, and a lot of people like that Etsy shop and it works for them. So I recommend that shop as well. I did buy some pocket pages from them. So I know that their shop is legit and for realsies, but um, if you would like pocket pages that will fit Dragon Shield card sleeves, I recommend Amifa pocket pages. I'll insert a picture. I ordered some recently for my Jisung collection. So yeah, 
I heard a lot of good things about it. The only thing that I don't like about it though is that it's meant for double-sided storing and I prefer single-sided storage because I like seeing the back of my cards. I think that's kind of cute but obviously it varies per person so I'll just insert a picture and then maybe a link to where you can find it. But yeah, so that is all the materials that I use for my mini binders. And lastly, for trades and sales, I have my Holy Grail products. I always ship my items in a greeting card. So let me just start off by saying I get my greeting cards from Ross. They're like $3.99 for 40 cards and it's very cheap. Uh, I rarely trade now, but I do sometimes sell cards. So I always just like to have one on on hand um it's really important to ship your trading cards or <laughs> trading cards your photo cards in a in a, a greeting card instead of just shoving it into an envelope because it helps prevent your card from getting damaged in transit like for example a usps machine eating your card um with that and the discussion about protecting your cards during transit, I highly recommend investing in some top loaders. So I get my top loaders from a local uh, game store, but I used to get them from Amazon and eBay. The cost for top loaders has increased by a ton and it's a little bit bothersome, but I think it's very helpful to ship your photo cards in a... Uh, top loader and if you really don't have one you can ship it in like a ziploc bag and a cardboard i think a cardboard box you can cut one out and then you can just put your card there but make sure you still sleeve it so this is preference but i would really like it if my cards uh were sent sleeved and then put in a top loader or on top of cardboard just because it helps prevent it from getting scratched. Um, yes, this is a very important step for me. I always send cards, no matter the cost, no matter how rare, in a penny sleeve and a top loader, or if I don't have a top loader cardboard. Uh, I think this is the norm for a lot of traders and sellers on Instagram and Twitter when selling or trading their photo cards. It's usually recommended highly encouraged that you ship things sleeved and in a top loader or some sort of protection um this is just a fun fact i like to use cute washi tape to tape it down the greeting card but this is not necessary i know a lot of people who use just regular tape and it works out just fine for them and then lastly stamps stamps are an essential to even sending out your photo cards um i just use regular stamps the 55 cent stamps but lately i think it's being encouraged in the community to use additional not additional ounce but to use non-machinable stamps or two ounce stamps just so that it doesn't go through the machine um but nonetheless it doesn't really matter i still use the 55 cent stamps but yeah, so those are all the materials that I use in my collection and that I recommend. If you still have some questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye!